<laughs> All right. We are live. Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Live episode 119. I actually know what Ooh. episode it was this week. Oh, snap. <laughs> wow. I did we my did fucking it. research like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys today? Glad to see both of you. Doing good, houses. man. What's shaking, man? You guys have a good week? It's been, God, it's been such a busy week for me, man. It's been yeah. a nightmare. I'm tired as hell. I've yeah. been up all night. I didn't go to sleep till 7 a.m. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was just, shit. What were you doing till 7 a.m.? Oh, what are you I doing, was, Grandpa? Yeah, I, that late. Oh, really? I can still have, you know, <laughs> it's called, back in my day, it was called Nick at Night, Robbie, okay? Nick at <laughs> Night. We were fucking up all night. You remember, Brian? I, um... I uh, had a lot of fucking videos to do last night, and I didn't uh, have any. I didn't have any gameplay. And so you so, had to uh, play some video games so you could get some <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> and it was a nightmare, man. Oh my god! I, I, you know, I did. Uh, I did fourteen videos yesterday, and my brother god came damn. over last night. <laughs> wow! And so, I spent. Yeah. I'll t- here's the difference between me and Beastly. He did fourteen videos yesterday. I spent like fourteen hours on a video yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so really you feel true. my vibe. <laughs> yeah, and I got up this morning, and I turned my computer on, and I heard the sweet voice of Briar Rabbit streaming. I'm really Ooh. enjoying your, your stream, Briar. Thank you, man. Uh, I really appreciate it's that. It's an awesome streamer. It's, it's, it's a great service. And for the, of course, everybody here watches you on stream. But man, now I get to see it pretty much every time I turn my computer on because I figured out how to do something. <laughs> uh, add, add it to my home, my home button. So now it's one of my home pages. Oh, nice. So. Thank you. Every time I turn on, I hear that sweet, sweet sound. The very first day, Kate had no fucking clue what was happening. She said, when you went to work, your computer started talking. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that, that was the fire too. I've left the stream on and like closed the lid of a computer. Or like I've watched till the end of a stream and then closed the lid on a computer. And then when the streamer started again, the next day, it just started like p- pushing out his volume through the speakers. And I'm like, what is that sound? <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, it's been a lot of fun watching that stream. We we all uh, had a little bit of time to play a new game this week. Yeah, a little I know game club. So this it. is a new feature, right? Yeah, this is the new segment of the Beastly Thoughts Live show, the Beastly Thoughts Live Game Club, and hopefully you guys had an opportunity to play it uh, this week as well. We played Fury on the PlayStation Four. Yeah. So at, at least that's one of the games we know we played. I'm not going to talk about the myriad games that I had. To go through last night because I don't want to talk about it. So use Fury. Fury yeah, gameplay. Well, if you could get any well, gameplay good enough, because that, that yeah. game makes you feel like an idiot sometimes. <laughs> that game is, oh man, let's talk about this game, all right? So you guys in the comment section, let us know what you think too. Uh, Fury is a very, very tough game. It's a very beautiful game. Very, It's a cell shaded environment. Uh, you are this, this, I don't know what to call this guy, like a... A prisoner, a wanderer, he who's waking up out of his sleep by some dude with a a bunny costume on, and this guy <laughs> yeah. tells you you need to escape this space prison, and then you start going level through level until you're free. And once you're free, you're all the way down from space onto the planet Earth. Difficulty. Let's talk about this game. All right, all right. So first of all, it's a it's like a I like the style of this game. Before we talk about difficulty, I, I just want to talk about what this game looks like. Right, it's a fighting game, sort of. Uh, it reminds me of a bullet hell shooter and like an uh, isometric game, all kind of combined. Yeah, you have this overhead view of most of the gameplay, uh, but it's really reactive and it's really it, the, it's really fast and it's really fun. Um, basically, you're, you're this character like moving around and it's all boss fights and you, you play in this arena and you've got a few tools at your disposal. You got a really quick dodge, you got a parry system, you got a sword, and you've got a gun which you can charge up and shoot for a harder shots you can also charge up your sword attack Uh, and those are your tools right and then you gotta Mm -hmm. get into these boss fights and the boss fights are they're mega man they take 20 30 minutes (laughs) pop (laughs) they're yeah yeah the 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 boss fights made me feel like i was playing an isometric shadow of the colossus or something it was just insane just when you think you're getting there you realize you've knocked off the very first or second dot on an eight tier system for that enemy and you realize you got to do the whole thing again six or seven times before you beat him jeez yeah yeah it's 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 a very it's a unique game but it's one that i guess when we say this is a niche type of game you've really got to be a certain type of gamer to really really get into this 
Uh, I would say, uh, especially since it's free, that anybody can get into this. I, th I It's fun enough, it's responsive enough, that I think anybody should ch at least check it out to see if you like it. Uh, there's a lot of discussion uh, on Discord about it, and you know people were digging it, but man, it is hard. It is the difficulty on this thing is, you know, it reminds me of those bullet hell shooters of like the late '90s, where mm -hmm. you just had everything coming at you from every direction. You just had to like laser focus to like keep from getting hit, and even though you've got this huge health bar, you know, you can get you can get down fairly quickly, and the bosses have huge health bars too, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think anybody can get into it. I don't know that everybody's gonna stick with it though, if yeah. you know what I mean. It's one of those games. It's kind of like Bloodborne, right? Uh, you've got to learn particular patterns for each enemy you fight. Yeah. And every time you you destroy a complete life bar for the enemy, because there's like six or seven, every time you destroy a complete life bar, they come back and they have a whole new move set. Yeah. Something has changed. Either they've added a new move for you to parry. They shoot different types of projectiles at you you got to figure out how to do it for each layer or level for each boss and it's like bloodborne right because when you first start playing a game like uh dark souls demon souls or bloodborne you're either the kind of player who's going to keep and stay persistent until you you get to the point where you're able to do it and you feel that joy of wow i completed this i beat this really hard enemy or you're going to be some of the people who say man this is just hard as hell yeah. and i don't know I don't if i wanna... can stick all the way I don't want to put myself in, up for this kind of punishment. Which I definitely fall yeah. into the ladder. I don't hate myself enough to play those two <laughs> groups. I definitely am not going to stick with this game. Uh, I played it. I think I played a total of three hours of this game. Uh, mm -hmm. I played. I started off on the normal difficulty, and I'm like, you know, I, I ain't got this kind of time. <laughs> I ain't got oh, this kind of time, man. Uh, so I put it on the easy mode, which is way, way easier. Uh, and really? it allows you to progress relatively quickly. You get through the bosses. The bosses have, uh, they do less damage and they seem to have more simplified mechanics. And uh, I found that the game wasn't very enjoyable at that point. The main appeal of this game seems to be in the difficulty. Uh, wow, okay. You know, the, the story was not that interesting to me personally. Uh, I found that it was actually a little annoying the way, you know, I, I thought it was a cool setup, right? You get broken free out of this prison. Uh, this rabbit guy is kind of, you know, who knows what his tr true intentions are. There's a freaking rabbit talking to right? you. Right, but there's these, there's these long kind of dialogue sections where you can really only walk at a slow pace. And you don't oh, I hate have, that. I was, really, I was really turned off by that. I didn't like that at all. Uh, and I found that my drive to keep going in this game was not really there because if I had more time to spend with it, I think I would get down with the difficulty. Just trying to challenge myself personally in a Ninja Gaiden-esque way. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember those Ninja Gaiden games that yeah. came out on the Xbox, uh, but yes. they were really difficult. Yeah. And the, the thrill of that game was actually just trying to complete it because it was so difficult. I could see that being a real drive here. But I just personally don't have that kind of time anymore to devote to to that kind of thing. And when I do have extra time to devote to a video game for enjoyment's sake, I tend to look at something that, you know, has a progressive story that kind of gets in deep and, you know, stuff like uh, Uncharted 4 and, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm going to give this one up probably in a hurry here. I probably won't play any more of it, but I am going to come back to it in about six months. Uh, I'm going to see who's playing it on Twitch and who's doing speed runs because I think that's going to be really impressive. Ooh. Yeah, well, I, I got to say, I 100% agree with you. I didn't get the opportunity to play it on the easier mode. I played it on the default setting, and God, it was ball bustingly hard, man. Uh, I got to the almost to the end of the second boss, but he ended up beating me, and then I was like, man, it took me 30 minutes to lose? And then I was like, I don't want to do this <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah. It takes so long, and uh, once you do, I guess figure out these patterns, I guess, over time, it'll become more rewarding. But I got to agree with you. Right now, there's other games out there that I'd rather spend my time playing that I do feel more rewarded for playing uh, in the meantime. Uh, for, for what it is, you know, I, I think it's a, a pretty awesome game, especially being a free one on the PlayStation 4. For people who have PlayStation Plus, it's definitely, a, you know, an added bonus for a gamer. Something unique, something difficult, and something that will test your fucking thumbs because you're moving constantly. There's so many different mechanics that this guy has. You're shooting projectiles, you're parrying moves, you know, you're doing all kinds of physical attacks. It's just really, really crazy. Charge up attacks and these these maps get bigger you know as you progress through the game and you're able to actually run around and these bosses will chase you or you can chase them i had a lot of fun doing that today too i didn't win 
but had fun chasing people. Mm -hmm. But I got to agree with you there, Briar. Uh, I'll probably step away from this one uh, in light of this is our new series that we're doing. It's time for us to move on to the next thing. But before we talk about this coming well, week, I got more to say about Fury because I think there's a couple of things they can improve, do to improve this game. And oh, good. Maybe this is something that's already in the game that I just didn't realize was in there. But if there was a time attack mode with like a ghost, like uh, similar to, Ooh, yeah, you know, like so I can go, you know, see how fast my friends have beaten this boss and like challenge them to beat it faster. You know, we could keep posting times about how fast we did it. Like, oh, Robbie did it in, you know, like uh, 11 minutes, but I got it done in 10 minutes and 45 seconds, you know, and then Beastly comes in, he's like 10 minutes, 40 seconds, bitch. And then Robbie comes yeah. around and he blows us out of the water bitch. with like nine minutes and 30 seconds, you know, like that would be awesome. That man. would be a cool feature for this game. I think they should add that because uh, that would be nice. you know, the speed run community, I think is going to, I think could really latch onto this game because it is challenging and. Uh, definitely figuring out how to beat these bosses as quickly and efficiently as possible uh, is definitely one of the main attractions to this game. It is a boss fight or a boss run, and I think that could really go go well for this game. All right, so, Mr. Uh, Robbie, what did you think of Fury? Let us know. I mean, I completely agree with you guys. I think this is a super cool game. It's really cool. It's different. It feels definitely old school in a way, right? Like, it's got that difficulty curve. Mm -hmm. It's got, yeah. like, that retro futuristic sort of you're the samurai guy he's a gun and a sword like it's kind of a hack and slash it's a top-down game it's really cool like i like it a lot and i like the challenge of it honestly it doesn't frustrate me a lot i just keep going back and keep trying and yeah i really enjoy it i mean i don't know how long i'll be playing it for but i'm definitely happy i gave it a shot because so i was like this game is really something it's yeah. very unique all right well you guys let us know what you thought about Fury in the comment section. Uh, did you play? Did you beat it? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? We definitely would like to know. But now we're going to talk about next week's game. It is uh, the Banner Saga 2. We're going to be playing on Xbox One. Xbox Live Games with Gold this month. This game is available for free. And it's a very uh, it's made by, I think, a Stoic. I'm trying to remember the name of the developer. I think Stoic Studios made this game. And it really reminds me of 80s cartoons like uh, The Lord of the Rings. Mm. Uh, they all had this kind of old uh, Secret of Nim old art style. And it really has that. And they, it has it in droves. If you as old as I am, you can remember back to when cartoons actually look like this. It's uh, I want to say it's an isometric um God, what type of game uh, would this strategy what's, game? It's it's more yeah, it's like a um, Final Fantasy Tactics type of game. Yeah, turn based strategy. Turn based strategy, uh, and it's a it's a beautiful game. Yeah. I haven't really gotten too much into turn based strategy games. I played the first since... one. I liked it quite a bit, but I was not able to finish it. I, I just ran out of time, and you know how sometimes you like a game, but you just kind of you stop playing it for a couple of days, and then you you kind of a couple of days turns into a week, and then two weeks. Destiny. And then, all of a sudden, it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to Destiny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Took a break, and it's been five years already. Yeah, but we're going to be playing the Banner Saga, too. I'm looking forward to trying that out this week. So if you guys have Xbox Ones and you have Xbox Live Games with Gold, play that with us so you can talk about it with us in the discussion next week. And that is our segment for the Beastly Thoughts Game Club. Yeah, I'd really now, like to... I'd, I'd like to get this game club to be something where we... When we're talking about this, we have an active dialogue going with the chat at the same time. So, yeah, so start playing. You know, we're trying to pr pick free games so that everybody can join in. We're going to try and alternate between Xbox and PS4 so everybody can, you know, it's not it's not console exclusive. Uh, there will be weeks where we do choose games that are like the big release of the week, like No Man's Sky yeah, mm -hmm. we've talked about. Um, but we are going to try and... We're going to try and make this make as this inclusive as, as, as possible inclusive so we as possible. have an open dialogue, uh, not only during the show, but also uh, you know, in the comments section of the video and in uh, Discord, wherever. You know, like we, we, do this, we want this to be an interactive piece of the show. So definitely uh, join in, join in the discussion, uh, talk about it in the comments, uh, in, the, in the chat windows, and uh, we'll be taking all that stuff and running with it. Absolutely, I'm looking forward man. to playing Banner Saga, too. More right. so than I was looking forward to things. playing Fury. Yeah, well, you know, oh. Fury was one of those games where I tried it, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And I played it for like 30 minutes, and I put it down. I was like, well, it would be a great idea to play this with the guys. And then I played it this week. I was like, holy shit, this game is hard. It so is hopefully hard. the Banner Saga isn't as hard as uh, as Fury was. So yeah, guys just don't have fast reaction times. You're too old. 
These these hands. How, did you beat the game, Robbie? Right, no. Dan. Shut, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played that much, but I got to the third boss though within an hour, or so uh-huh. I'm pretty happy now. Oh, All I right, so news? Are we going to talk about anything else we've been playing, or you just want to skip right over to the news? I think we can go <laughs> into news. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's, let's get right news. into the news. PlayStation Plus subscription will be required to pl- I mean, I'm sorry, no PlayStation Plus subscription will be required to play No Man's Sky. That's awesome news. That is good freaking news, man. That, that's uh, Sony's promise from the beginning. They said the games that were online only are free. Well, they said free to play mostly uh, would be no subscription. But this is kind of a new thing. That's pretty that cool. A game that's a full-fledged game that's online, no subscription. You know, that's that's a good thing for the consumer, I guess. I wonder if more developers are going to take this take this step for more. I think for more the main online. reason uh, this game doesn't require PS Plus though is because Sean Murray of Hello Games has said this isn't really a multiplayer game. Right. Like you can find other people, but the thing is, this game is so like large. Journey. There's no kind of matchmaking involved, so you kind of just discover people as you're playing the game, and even then, you'll yeah. barely see anyone. I think the journey like comparison is very apt. I think it's going to be yeah. you know you you'll run into other people. But it's not like me, Beastly, and Robbie are going to go raid, you know, Planet X together. No, there's no way to match. That sounds so cool, though. It does sound cool. That's what you can do, but, yeah. Well, you know, I'm still worried about this game. You know, I'm trying to temper my expectations for this game. Because right from the get-go, the first time we saw it, I was like, holy shit, this looks like the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, it's the easy way, to get excited. You know, yeah. the way that first trailer showed him, get into that ship, fly into space, and there was, like, shit into space, right? That was amazing. I am trying to temper my expectations for this game because if you I really like, I looked at all those trailers. Have you guys seen those trailers that came out, like for you know survival and for fight and you know like for each? I think there were four or five different trailers. Yeah, and it makes it so hard to not get excited, but it is the smart thing to temper but your you expectations. But if you look at if you look at those trailers, I still fucking don't know what I'm going to be doing in this game. <laughs> I mean, it's either, like the man. whole point of this game knows. just to try and survive and get to the center of the universe. Is there yeah. like a grander storyline? Is it Minecraft without building anything? Like, what am I going to be doing? What is the drive? What is what is my goal in this game? I, I just don't know. I think I know what the drive is in this game. I think it's all about collecting resources, upgrading your ship, and upgrading the hyperdrive so you can get further and further in the universe. It's really about exploring and just upgrading resources in your ship. And I know you can trade with aliens and things like that, and you can mm-hmm. trade with different colonies. It's going to be about that, really. It's just about the exploration and about the mining of reload. So that resources. that's me. That's the d- description of Minecraft, except Minecraft also has you get to build a world, you get to build everything, and this game is just kind of missing that, right? Minecraft better game mm-hmm. confirmed. So <laughs> Ghost of VT is in the comments saying, he said he's I'm going to be a this- badass space pirate. Please fear me. And that might be the... Like, in all seriousness, that might be... Like the strongest point of this game is if you can really Ooh. role play a character in this game, like you might have a lot of fun with it, right? It's like, all right, how do I want to play this game? Do I want to be like this benevolent, like kind of really like nice person that just you know leaves the local wildlife alone and you know tries to stay out of disputes, or do you want to just be a badass, like rape and pillage and you know get into every that fight you great. can, right? Like, what do you want to do? Oh, yeah. That might be well, it, but. Uh, I don't know anything about, like, a main story arc of this game, and I don't even know if there's going to be one. Well, just imagine if if you're a homebody and you just want to patrol your planet, and if if anyone comes to your planet, they're fucked. Yeah, I don't know if that's that interesting, though, because (laughs) any changes you make to your planet are not going to stick around, right? Like, all that stuff's going to replicate. It's not like you can build a base on your planet. You can't, like, Minecraft-style build a castle on your planet. And then have Maybe people come can. visit. Maybe they are keeping I don't, that I, I think they would have showed that. Know. I think they would have showed that. Uh, it, it does look like you could collect resources and craft materials, possibly craft a ship, craft your own armor, like that kind of stuff. But why? In Destiny, I'm collecting all these, these resources to become more powerful so that I can beat Oryx. I can beat uh, the SIVA virus. I can beat other players in PvP. Why do I want to do that in this game? That's my question. Mm, yeah, they, they've got that's a very good question. They've got to show us, and we've got a lot of people in the, in the uh, comment section who want to be evil. So I guess the evil empire is taking over. And Ghost Step ET also said that he's going to cancel his PlayStation Plus subscription. I would hold off on that, Ghost. <laughs> Don't do that. I'd say it's uh, a good value. 
<laughs> because uh, there's other games out there that you might be wanting in the future. But yeah, so continuing on, Robbie, what do we have next in our news? Oh, this is a long one. You guys ready for this? That's what she said. Sure. All right. Be prepared. New rumors on the Nintendo NX this week say the console will be a high-powered handheld and it will have a dock to connect to your TV, yes. which provides no this additional the- processing power as previously rumored. Additionally, yeah. the console will have two additional controllers that can be attached to the system. Cartridges will be the main source of physical media and it will be less powerful than the current PS4 current is the key word, PS4. But be more powerful than right. the last-gen consoles. But and it will be unveiled a- this September. This is amazing. This is the best news ever. Right? I mean, this flies in the face of what I was hoping for for the last two years. And I'm, I was so psyched when I read all this information. Like, so, I'm so happy. excited. Like, this thing, okay. This is epic. It's going to be a handheld device. It looks like it's going to probably be, like, some kind of tablet, right? I think that it's truly you, a handheld over yeah, a home console. Yeah, two controllers. You plug controllers into when you want to use it on the go. Mm-hmm. I don't know how big this thing's going to be. Portability, to me, is actually a pretty big concern. I hope this thing is small enough that it can fit in a backpack or, you know, whatever. Um, and you're going to be able to play your games on it, right? And it's going to be a powerful handheld. About the, the most, power, the most powerful. Yeah, handle. I mean, it's, the processor that's being rumored to be in this thing is Tegra X1. powerful. You know, uh, uh, is it Razer makes like a you know a little console that hooks up to the TV currently, so you can it's the Nvidia Shield. Yeah, you can actually see how powerful this thing is rumored to be. So you, you can take it on the go, uh, or it's going to have a little docking station that the rumor is is going to be sold separately, which sucks. And you'll oh, be able really? To take the you're going to be able to. Unplug the controllers, dock this thing, play it on your TV too. So, if they make a Mario Maker for this, if they make a Zelda for this, if they, you know, if you buy virtual console games for this, you buy one game and you have one system that you can either take with you or play on your TV at home. I think it's brilliant. It is brilliant. Very innovative. I got to tell you, this is bold for them, and I'm so glad to see this. I really let, am. Yeah. Let me just let me just say this. Nintendo took up a majority of my my content for the week. I probably got six or seven stories about Nintendo because all this NX news is really really exciting. At first, yeah. I was wondering what it was going to be, and then I started really reading and getting a lot of details on what this NX is going to be. First of all, from what we understand, this is going to be the most powerful handheld of all time. It's it's yeah. sporting uh, Nvidia uh, Tegra. 1X technology, but that's a year and a half old. There yeah. are so rumors, though. It could be the X2 ship. Yeah, yeah the X2, it could be the next one. Yeah. The X2 is yeah. what uh, they're speculating that, that it's actually going to be once it releases in March, and the X1 is kind of giving developers uh, you know, kind of a foothold on what they're going to be doing so they can kind of understand the technology. Right. Now, if it's the X2, it's going to be even better. But oh, keep yeah. in mind, the X1 is outperforming the Wii U. It's outperforming the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. And to be honest, a lot of the reasons that I'm not really into my portable gaming like I used to be is because I'm, I've am i never really gotten a full console experience on, on a portable. But think about this, right? For the young people out there, you're on a bus, you're going to school, you're going to university, you got your NX tablet with you, and your friend comes to sit down next to you while you're on the bus. They're like, oh, that game looks fucking awesome, man. And you're like, for real? Try it, try it out. You pull off the side of the damn controller, you give them a controller, you set it up and you're both playing together. Local co-op, no matter where you are. That's this very, does very... sounds so cool. That's extremely innovative. Not only that, this thing is going to have full console quality experiences. It's going well, to be better wait than... wait a minute. Before we or go with it? full console quality experiences, let's talk about right. the format at which they are selling the games. Okay. Cartridge-based games. Yep. All right, so with a cartridge-based game, you have to... The price of this game is now going to be determined not only by you know the quality of the game and how long it took to develop it, but also by how big it is and how, how big of a how much memory they have to put in every cartridge, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want if you want games with high definition textures and huge worlds, these games are going to have to come on some mega big <laughs> memory cards, right? So yeah. when they say cartridges, I'm assuming that they're going to have some kind of you know, SD card st- style thing in there. In 3DS, cartridge. PS Vita style. Yeah. Well, PS Vita mostly was downloadable, right? Uh, well, the cartridges are still out there as well. It's just, yeah, I mean, I it's, old techno- it's, it's old technology, but 
look at what they were able to do with that, you know, five or six years ago. Imagine that's true, that's where, where, where we are today yeah. as far as the technology. Look at the 3DS. You yeah. know, look at look at what they're able to do with that. But it's not and, like and, a DVD where or a, or a Blu-ray drive where you know they're basically free, right? Because mm -hmm. like you, you, the cost to burn a, a Blu-ray is basically nothing. Uh, yeah. It's as close to nothing as it could be. Whereas mm -hmm. a cartridge, you actually have to per, per game, you have to buy enough memory to put into that thing <laughs> that can hold the game. You know, which mm -hmm. is concerning to me, especially if you get into like, you know, something with, you know, a very big world and a lot of textures, maybe a lot of music, maybe some voice acting, maybe some FMV on it. You know, like all of a sudden, like how big are these cartridges going to be? Especially if we yeah. start getting ports of like PS4 or Xbox One games, you know, that, that were designed I'm, I'm, to be I'm on excited. a Blu-ray disc. I'm really excited to see if that's even going to be possible. I'm thinking it is. You know, there are already developers out there murmuring in the streets that this thing is awesome technology. What Nintendo is doing is very revolutionary. So I'm thinking at some point we're going to see some ports. How they're going to stack up is really the thing that's got me most yeah. excited as well. Because with cartridge technology, you know, I got a, a, a micro SD card. It's like this thin, tiny. Yeah. It has 64 gigs on it. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's Blu-ray quality. If, they, if they're able to, you know, monopolize on that type of technology and change it and, you know, advance it to where we are in today's hardware specs, it's going to be incredible to see what they're going to be able to do with these with these yeah. cartridges. And not only that, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly who it was because this was another bit of my news, but a high-ranking Nintendo official said that there's a lot of speculation as to the price of what the NX is going to be. Yeah. And it's, it's low expectations. People think it's going to be really cheap. He said it's going to be cheaper than everybody's even expecting. He said it's going to be a mass market really? product with a mass market price. They That's want great. it in every house. So... I mean, this information to me is amazing. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to have theoretically a handheld system that you can take on the go. This changes road trips. You're in the back seat with your brother and your sister. You got an NX. You hand them the other controller. You're both playing together for the first time ever. It changes Not only that, gaming at home, right? You want to play some Mario Maker? You know, maybe I'll I'll bring it into bed and I'll design my level. You know, mm -hmm. go outside, design my level out on the porch, and then I can plug it in. You know, put it on the and TV, on the and the, yeah. the the rest of the family can play the level that I just designed. You know, like it's just, it's so cool that it's like this cohesive thing. I am a bit disappointed that it's not going to be in parity with the next generation of consoles. That we're never going to see, you know, Call of Duty and Destiny and you know these big multi-platform titles come into a Nintendo console. I think those days are basically over. And I think Nintendo is conceding that fact. Uh, so this is going to be your Nintendo game console again. You know, I don't think we're going to see third parties pick up on this unless it sells like gangbusters. But even then, yeah. you know, people remember when the Wii U developers remember when the Wii sold 10 billion, you know, consoles yeah. and nobody bought any third party software for it. Absolutely. Just Wii Sports, basically. Yeah. That's I mean, all I think it's used for. The, the thing is, right, Nintendo has a real recipe for success right here. If, if they do a few things right, this could be the biggest thing they've ever done. Yeah. The technology sounds amazing. Of course, it's a little, you know, underwhelming to hear that it's not going to be as powerful as the PS4 and the yeah. Xbox One three-year-old technology. Okay. It might yeah. be okay. The design I still, I think, leaves a lot in the air, too. Like, the, what is this thing going to look like? Is it going to be a tablet like the size of an iPad? Is it going to be a tablet the size of an iPad Mini? Is it going to be about the same size as a 3DS where it opens and closes? One of the Have things no I like idea. about the 3DS is that... You know, you can give it to a kid and be fairly certain that they're not going to wreck it right away because the thing is kind of a clamshell case. It protects its own screens and buttons. You know, it's pretty hardy. Uh, an iPad, I do not feel the same way about. <laughs> but if it's cheap, I guess it doesn't matter, right? No. Yeah, I mean, it's just so many opportunities for Nintendo yeah. at this point. They're changing the game. It's what they're known for. Yeah. They changed it with the 64. They changed it with the Wii. You know, they, they usually innovate gaming, and I think this is really pushing the envelope as well. Now, if Nintendo were to offer, which I think they probably will, a premium service for Nintendo gamers, similar to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live, they yeah. offer something like that and give us access to the Nintendo backlog. Oh my God! You know, oh. Every everyone's gonna, <laughs> everybody on Earth is gonna buy this thing. Everybody on Earth is gonna play it and love it. If you got, you know, an immediate backlog of thousands of games, you know, you got Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, yeah, that GameCube, an incredible idea, Wii. Man. That really they is. got all that stuff, and you know, and you just pay fifty forty nine dollars a year or fifty nine dollars a year. 
who's not going to pay that and love it and just think this is the best thing to slice bread? It's going to be. Yeah. Some people don't like sliced bread, but it's going to be really, Those really people are weird. Don't yeah, listen to I, them. I'm not, I'm not going to jump on board of the hype bandwagon yet. There's a lot of stuff still up in the air for me. Is this going to be a touchscreen device? If it is a touchscreen device, how does that translate to playing the game on the TV? Are you going to need a oh, Wii, not. a Wii style remote to play? You know, to do touch input put on your TV. Is it just going to be, you know, a dual joystick controller that you attach to the thing? Uh, you know, how much do those joysticks cost to replace? You know, are they are they good joysticks? Are there dual joysticks? Can I play a shooter on it? You know, is what games are going to come out for this thing? Is it going to be Zelda and Pokemon and then another two years before we see another game we want? You know, like there's a lot of questions up in the air for me that Nintendo needs to answer. Uh, and frankly, their track history over the last several years <laughs> does not have me super like super on their side right now right is like they're they're not releasing enough big titles in my opinion for the consoles they have and at this point i don't know if there's any any real reason to think that they will for this uh we've you know we we know zelda's coming out for it we think there's a new pokemon game coming out for it but what what then are we gonna get mario maker right away i think they'd be a great port but then with you know, without the Wii U controls, like, uh, how do you do that? You know, is it is it going to be the same experience? To me, there's a lot of questions. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of them are around the control scheme, too. So it sounds like in September we're going to be hearing, we'll actually seeing this thing and it'll be revealed. Yeah. I'm cautious. Yeah. Like I said for a long time, I'm, I'm even more so now. I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, um, I'm, I've always been. I've always enjoyed my, my handhelds. And uh, it looks like Nintendo is taking the whole 3DS uh monopoly and transferring it over to this nx and trying to bring something new to the table i like the fact they're trying to change it up give people a new way to play uh hopefully it's successful for them mm -hmm. if they're smart about this thing is going to be really big but if they screw this up this could be you know one of their, their up, final you know what's on the line for them right is the it's, 3ds it's really bad. the 3ds mm -hmm. is still a successful product for them and this is mm -hmm. the you know this is going to replace that product yeah and if this fails yep. And they basically they kill off the 3DS as a product line. Like this could be the end of Nintendo. Yeah. Wow. I didn't think of it like that. But it could damn, change the company. It really right. could. Yeah. Well, we'll you guys let us September, so. let us know yeah. what you think in the comments, it's guys. Out I know next you guys too early next year. Yeah, and we're going to see it, it in soon. September. Yeah. You know, Tokyo Game Show is right around the corner. And you guys want to see that? I don't. I, I gotta see it first. I'm gonna pre-order. Yeah. It. I, I already know I'm gonna pre-order. Nintendo, <laughs> I have to hold off. Like I just don't know. I'm gonna give it. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Nintendo, and um, you know the the only thing that I've ever really bought that I kind of well two things I regret it was the Wii and the Wii U. Everything else I've really yeah. got plenty of playtime out of. The yeah. Wii was all gimmicks, and the Wii U was just not enough. My new Nintendo uh, DS, I, I didn't really get a whole lot of play. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, my DS new light. I, I can't yeah. remember what it was called. Yeah. My new 3DS has probably gotten a total of six to eight hours total yeah. out of the whole thing. So I just haven't been, you know, down with Nintendo like I used to. But they could bring it back around if they do this thing right. Yeah. But, man, they've got to get third parties on board. They have to. Agreed. You know, I mean, they don't have enough first party stuff. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. I don't know if they can do it, man. They got to try. They're releasing, they a console, they're releasing a console that is not going to be easy to develop, like, port games over for, from. So they're gonna have like de developers are gonna have to develop a game specifically for this console. They're not gonna have any idea if they'll sell it all. And historically, over the last couple of generations, longer than that, few generations, third-party stuff doesn't sell on Nintendo consoles. So mm. like I, I could see like a couple of companies like testing out like a launch game that is half baked, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then those don't sell, and then no third parties do it again. So yeah. uh, this this isn't yeah. part of the news, but I want to ask you guys because it is uh, centered around Nintendo and the NX. Hearing the news and speculations on what the specs are of this thing, do you guys think it's possible that they could be looking at VR or a hypothetical VR future? No, no, because that yeah they were heavily speculated yeah, to be moving towards VR. So. No. This thing doesn't sound unless th this new Tegra two X is much more powerful than the one. This thing would have to be so powerful for VR. Like even for PCs, like you have to have a really high end computer to run VR good. Yeah. So yeah. I doubt it. All right. So the next little bit of news uh, is is actually really really interesting for people playing Destiny. The final patch for Destiny on last gen consoles has been deployed this week. Current and last gen versions of the game will begin to separate away yeah. this month. Wow. So wow. 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 No more Trials of Osiris. No more updates. No more DLC. 
Um, and uh, The Rise of Iron will not be coming to the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 either. Right. My, so, iron, my iron is rising. So they, they separated <laughs> they development. You know, they were developing for four consoles. They separated development. Hopefully this will allow for greater graphical fidelity for Destiny expansions moving in the future. It does suck yeah. if you are the owner of an Xbox 360 or PS3 and have been playing Destiny for the last few years, and I totally understand that. Uh, however, uh, that's... By Bungie's estimation, about 10% of the population, um, they basically just ran out of available memory, available space. Like, they could not do anything more with Destiny without dropping those old consoles, which, frankly, are over 10 years old now. So It's yeah. time. Like, it's, it's definitely time, time man. Uh, so yeah. I, I definitely feel for those players. And Destiny is not going to be left in good shape when when it's basically abandoned in September by Bungie. You know, you're not going to be able to run Nightfalls. You're not going to be able to run Trials of Osiris, Rise of Iron. Uh, so, like, a lot of the stuff that you do on a weekly basis is just going to be over. Um, so, it, you know, if you are, if Destiny is your game, you know, if you are like me and you just, you play Destiny week in, week out, uh, it is definitely time to upgrade to a PS4. Uh, well, right. actually, it's not. <laughs> 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 like, you definitely want to be looking... For Xbox One, you know, you could be looking at the Xbox One S, but knowing that that Scorpio is coming out a year after the Xbox One S, man, that's got to make you cautious about buying. And PS4 and is in the same site. The Neo, too. we don't even know. Uh, yeah. Theoretically, it's coming out this year. So I'd hate Still to buy, be buying a PS4 today. You know, like, I, don't, I don't, I don't know yeah. if that's going to happen. Man. It seems like we, we, we're running out of time. I don't know time. if it's going to happen either. Something. Yeah, but but for the guys out there who haven't upgraded right now, if you're not into the 4K scene, which a lot of people aren't, very few people in the scheme of things have 4K TVs. Yeah, but that's going to change it, quickly over time, over a short period of time here. Basically, if you if you go to Best Buy or you go to the store now, 4K TVs are dropping in price tremendously. I think it's going to replace 1080p completely within the next few years like everybody's well, well, gonna be buying these things next five me, years definitely let, let me word that differently for the frugal shopper the person who doesn't care about 4k there's a lot of mm -hmm. people who say man my 1080p you know me if i wasn't really into the gaming scene the way i am i got a really nice 60 inch 1080p in my living room yeah beautiful nothing wrong with it right yeah. so there's a lot of people who feel that way and if you if you're out there on the ps3 or the xbox 360 and you don't mind or you like the xbox brand Right now is a really great time to get the original vanilla Xbox One. It's two forty nine, including all the bundles. So if you see the bundle I saw on yesterday on eBay, brand new from Microsoft Store, the Xbox One with Gears of War, with uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, and Sunset Overdrive for two thirty nine. So they're Whoa. getting they're getting rid of the old Xbox Ones. They're making way for the Xbox One S. And right now, they they haven't said when this sale is going to be over, but I'm thinking it'll never be over until they run out of stock. Who wants VCR in their living room? Nobody. Oh, they got to give them away. Man, you know what? I just yeah. watched E.T. on VHS yesterday, goddammit. That's right. I had oh, to. Because that is a great movie, man. Oh. My, my, my wife's, her father sent a VHS tape down here, and he asked for us to convert it. And so we actually watched it. And it was... E.T. It, it oh, took me oh. back, okay? So don't you talk shit about VCRs. What did it still look got, like? Talking God, Briar, it really it looked like it looked like a spoof of a movie. <laughs> it just you know, it's really weird, right? It's like now when I look at pictures from twenty years ago, I remember, you know, being there and seeing it and yeah. even taking pictures. And and looking at them now, it's like the clarity is so different compared to what we see now, even on our phones. It's like that reality of the VCR era, when you look at it, you just feel like you're trapped in time, like a Twilight Zone episode. What is happening? Yeah, you know, <laughs> wow. you see the intro and you see the little line go across the screen. Like, what was that? You don't know what it was. Yeah, it was, a, wrink it was a wrinkle in the tape. Like Fifteen years. I'd love yeah. to see what that looks like now. Well, I remember I like just being blown out of the fucking water when DVDs came out. DVD. That was on standard definition TV. V VHS looks shitty. Yeah, <laughs> it looked bad. <laughs> and, and, and I actually know the very first DVD that was ever made available to the public, and it was Twister, a movie with. Uh, what's his fucking face? Uh, Bill, Bill, pa Pullman? Is it Bill Pax Paxton or Paxton? Pullman? Is, is it Paxton? I don't Alien? Know. He's from Aliens? Yeah, that movie was available. Game the first over, movie. man! Game over! <laughs> <laughs> fucking man, it's game over! Great movie. Great Do you remember movie. the part where the cow flies past the windshield? Yeah. I yeah. laughed out loud in that theater, and oh, everybody just like turns and looks at me like, how can you be so callous toward that cow? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, like a full-on belly laugh in the middle of a 
quiet theater. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Twister was a shit, man. That was 20 years ago. My God. <laughs> you remember? You got a good memory there, Brian. You I love you. The you know, some things Ooh. stick out. <laughs> when you feel like a complete psychopath in the middle of a theater filled with 200 people, some things just stick out. <laughs> Oh god! All right, so continuing on with our news, Nintendo news. Nintendo's quarterly financials have revealed a huge loss for the company this quarter of twenty four point five billion yen, or twenty seven. Uh, I'm sorry, forty seven million dollars. Uh huh. So that's uh, quite a, a, a lot of money that they've lost this quarter, uh, and this does not take yeah. into effect or account the Pokemon Go uh, phenomena either. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's hopefully things change for the company in the, in the coming. Uh, yeah, hopefully the NX months. turns it around for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, this is more Nintendo news because just like my channel this week, Nintendo is taking over Beastly Thoughts. A new rumor suggested that Nintendo NX will also be compatible with Nintendo's own smartphone games. So yes, Mitomo will work on your Nintendo NX. Now, I, I I would hate to think that Pokemon Go would. Because that would uh, infer that there was some Wi-Fi connection or some kind of connection plan, but there, uh, Nintendo's mobile games will work on the Nintendo NX because of the mobile mobile games uh, I wonder GPU. If it would that's actually Pokemon Go. That's not technically a Nintendo game. It's published. Yeah, it's not really an in-house game for them at all. Yeah, like they just own it. I, I mean, uh, other they don't than me, own it. Don't they? No, they, no, no, they get. They, they have, I guess they get a cut of it. Yeah, they get it's a cut it's off not, of it. Niantic owns it. Well, Niantic um, developed it, and the Pokemon company owns their the name property. On it. And Nintendo has some kind of deal with them. Yeah. Yeah, well. What other Nintendo games are mobile? I, I only know about the Mi- Mitomo game. That's all I know, yeah. That's Gee. all. Yeah, that's no, that actually is all they have right now. Wow, well, that's like a non-story from Nintendo. Fuck that. That's a really crappy <laughs> game, too. Well, theoretically, they're going to have more games coming out. Yeah, well... Hopefully. That don't they suck. Sh- they should have saved that news for when those games release. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> a dark a Darksiders remaster is in the works for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Wii U. The game will run at 1080p, 60 frames per second on all platforms, except for the Wii U version, which will run only at 30 frames per second. <laughs> I'm surprised that Nintendo didn't get it. I'm, yeah, yeah, give Nintendo a prop. At least they're going to get it. So normally, they don't even get it. They're, they're getting the for Wii U. Good job, Wii U. I don't know if that's you a hurrah, um, you know. Poor, poor know. Wii U. The Wii U can't run Darksiders higher than 30 frames per second. Man. Uh, are you guys big into the Darksiders games? No. They're really good. I like them a lot. And oh, I love both I of like those reactions. Bro, I was like, no. I was yes. I just haven't yeah. played them. Same time you just, I just haven't played them. Ryan, yeah. you know what? Just... Salty old man. Let's just move on. <laughs> you know, I shaved my beard off so you can talk. Yeah, I shaved yeah, my beard off. The game. I'm like, no. <laughs> I shaved it off, Robbie, so I could feel young during the VC Thoughts. Someone show. said you look like a teenager in the comments, too. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> that was really? really? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll pay you after the show. Just send me your PayPal. Thanks. <laughs> send me your PayPal. <laughs> uh, Destiny, the collection, has been listed on Amazon with a release date of August 18th. Wow. This is exciting. For people who haven't played Destiny, which is like nobody, Destiny, the collection, Briar, what is this? Uh, well, I we don't really know, but it don't know. They didn't give theoretically. Any it's theoretically, it's you know every bit of Destiny up through Rise of Iron. So you get you get Destiny, you get Dark Below, you get House of Wolves, Ta- you get Taken King, Ta- King, and you get Ri- Rise of Iron. Like theoretically, wow. it's you know one package with everything, yep. sixty, seventy, eighty dollars. Who knows how, how much it's going to cost? Uh, and then. You know, it, it makes sense to release a package like that, right? So you don't have to buy, you know, the Taken King and then this. But yeah, it's to be expected. What I'm disappointed is there's not going to be a collector's edition for Rise of Iron. Mm. How many collector's editions do you own, Briar? Just two. You said just two. I got the <laughs> Vanilla Destiny one that came with the Talking Ghost. And then I got the uh, ra- the Taken King one that came with uh, the journal and the strange coin. Remember do you Dinklebot? feel Dinklebot. do you feel like your Dinklebot is the real Dinklebot, or do you feel like the new one's the imposter? How's it's your little my personal though? ghost. Uh, with it, I will become immortal. Oh so, well, fuck. Oh. That's a, sorry, that's a you guys missed answer. out. 
<laughs> oh shit! I should have bought one then. I wish I had my own little. Have a nice if know? shortened life. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, man. So a regular life. Who's old now, though? Robbie? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! I'm so young. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a bunch of assholes. I'm leaving. I gotta go. You know, I'm going to eBay and trying to find that fucking ghost so I can be here with you, Brian. He's, he's I'm telling you now, and you're the old man, Brian. Watch Robert, you get old, and our dingle bots keep us young. Holy shit! See, they didn't say that with the pre-orders, Brian. That if you bought it, you're going to fucking live forever. Yeah, but then I would have sold everything in Hey, I jump off a fucking building. My ghost just resurrects me. I just keep walking. It's faster than the elevator, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> that ten second respawn timer could be a bit of a bitch, but fuck it. <laughs> we gotta give a little to get a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking Dinklebot. And our last little bit of news, guys, uh, and this is something that I, I, it's kind of enlightening to see. It's also an amazing thing to see because Sony is like a jack of all trades. They've tried everything and failed in many, but the PlayStation brand and that division of the company is keeping them floating keeping them alive and the latest financial earnings call the playstation division has continued to be a large part of the company's overall profit as it accounts for almost 80 percent of the the entire profit of sony holy wow. shit that's scary that's, right that's scary that's position for sony to be in yeah it is you know like big decisions when you make decisions man it's like the whole company is riding on these decisions Wow, it's a lot of pressure to put on one division too. Yeah, that's probably why Jack Tretton left. Like that. Imagine the fingers too in each of those decisions, right? It's like you want to make a decision that you think is going to be best for gamers, but you got like your boss saying the whole fucking company's riding on this, man. <laughs> you need to make money. You better do this right. It, it's not a good place for Sony to be in. Yeah. Damn. I mean, well, without the PlayStation division today, I'm sure they'd be having losses like every quarter. It would, yeah, it would be tough for them. Well, I mean, that's just holding them afloat. Some companies only do one thing, and that one thing is the thing that makes some money. So at least Sony has other avenues that bring in twenty percent of profit. The PlayStation brand, as long as they keep the same steady minds on the pulse of the gaming culture, I, I hope, and I, you know, I really think they will be okay. Uh, I don't know, uh, man. I, Sony's looking pretty good right now, but with the Scorpio coming out next year, shit, like, that could change a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. good for all. It's good for us, man. It's great for us as gamers, but it's got to be scary as shit for Sony, man. Because, like, you think about it, like, you're going to play a multi-platform game. Which one are you going to and Which one are you going to play it on? Scorpio. The multi-plats are they're yeah. going to be 100 on the Scorpio, right? Yeah. That's just the way I do it. I want to play multi-plats on whatever is able to play and get the best experience on that console. So right. Scorpio is. But I got a question for you guys. Yeah. And since we're since we're just rambling on a little bit. The Scorpio, Microsoft has come out and said that the Scorpio will not have any exclusives specifically for that console. Right. It's Do you think be... that's a back? It's going to basically just be a backwards compatible, uh, you know, super powered Xbox One that makes Xbox One original games play better and look better. I think this is going to um, be how consoles move forward, man. This is this is how they're going to go. Do you think that there'll be outcry for people to see the the true power of this thing, and and maybe some some gamers and consumers are going to want them? to make games exclusively for the Xbox One so people can see what it's really yeah, all about? probably. In a couple of years, I would say. Not right away. I think a couple of years down the line, they'll slowly phase out the original Xbox One, and then Scorpio will be, you know, the main thing. I'm sure yeah, they'll I develop for it. here. You know, I think it's going to be similar to what, like, uh, like, the iPhone system is right now, is that, you know, you buy the newest, latest, greatest iPhone, it runs every piece of software that you can find in the, in the, in the store, uh, but over like the course of two years, there's been two new iPhones that come out. Your iPhone is starting to feel slow because the new software is optimized for these better processors in the new iPhones. And then finally software, you know, over the course of three or four years, software starts coming out that is no longer compatible with your phone, right? 100%. I think gotcha. this is how, what they're looking at. I think Sony and Microsoft are both looking at that for the future move, moving forward with consoles is that you buy in at a certain point, and your console is going to work for, you know, it's going to be top of the line for two, three years. Then they're going to upgrade to the next console. And that your console is still going to run the current games, but it won't be at the level that the next version of it. Let's, let's say the S, let's say the Scorpio version 
right? And then, you know, eventually, you know, the Scorpio is going to be the current gen console for three years, and they're starting to look at the Scorpio 2. They're going to want to start developing for that Scorpio 2. And then finally, like the Xbox One, okay, now no games are actively being developed with the one in mind, unless it's like an indie game that it doesn't mm. take a lot of graphical horsepower. But with this, that might even go on for longer, though, because now that they're on this x86 pr structure, it's just like an old PC can still run current games if you lower all the settings. You know, that Xbox One may last 10 years, 12 years. It It's really up in the air. It depends on uh, how aggressive the developers get with what they want to do. Yeah, and how fast they want to, you, you know, know move you on just, to new hardware. If, you, well. if they can release Fallout 5, uh, and it'll still run on Xbox One, it'll just look a hell of a lot better on the Xbox Scorpio, you know, great. If they want to release a Fallout 6, maybe it just doesn't run on Xbox One. It runs okay on Xbox Scorpio, but runs it's designed for Xbox Scorpio 2, you know? Lou Jimp in the uh, comment section doesn't like this new uh, system of upgrades or mid-console generation upgrades. Mm -hmm. And I feel kind of like that as well. I, I think that when you when you consistently do this, it takes away the allure of the next generation. I feel like the Xbox Scorpio and the PlayStation 4K or whatever they're going to make to combat the Scorpio is technically a next generation system. But the only thing they've taken away from it is truly next generation games. It's a next gen console that only does backwards so because compatibility. The way game development is working right now, and you can see this on the PC, is there's there's a graphical jump from the 360 to the Xbox One, right? But those mm -hmm. same games came out on a PC, and the only difference between a you know five year old PC and a current PC is that you just got to turn all those sliders down as far as like the graphical quality goes. Mm -hmm. I think, and now that these these consoles are both you know basically computers, they're basically x eighty six architecture yeah. computers. Architecture, yeah. Like they basically can fall into line with you know PC development. You know, it's like if you buy a PC that's a few years old, you're basically getting an Xbox One. Same with the PS four. And that's true with the Scorpio, too, you know? So I think that these games can be developed, like, cross-platform. You know, they sure, they got to work with different drivers. They got to work with different stuff. But, you know, based on what console you're putting it out on, you just set the graphical sliders to where you need them to be for that console. And, and what, yeah. you're saying, what you're saying is, in, in essence, true. It's factually true. But for me, I'm an old-school gamer. I remember, and I, and I enjoyed that moment in time where a new console generation happened. Wow. I, and, and you saw something that you never saw before at E3 or Tokyo Game Show. You yeah. saw new graphics that, in your yeah. mind, weren't possible a few years ago. You're like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah, but we I live feel in a like, world now where the PC is blowing everything out of the water anyway. Well, right? PC's back been blowing day, everything out of the water. Yeah, but back in the day when like SNES and even the Nintendo were the thing, like the Nintendo Entertainment System, when it was released... Blew any PC out of the water as far as games went. It just, yeah. you know, it just was that way. SNES did the same thing. It wasn't really till 3D cards came out for PCs, and like, you know, these things are really expensive, and, you know, development started to move toward three dimensions. You know, now it's like you can't, you can't release a console that can compete with a PC because it just costs too much. So there's no there's no steps in console development where they're they're releasing something that you, you couldn't possibly have seen on a PC, right? Uncharted Four could have come out on a PC, looked just as good four years ago. Yeah, but that's the whole thing, right? And and again, what you're saying is factually true. But for people who aren't PC gamers, I didn't grow up with PCs in my house. Yeah, I, I remember when I first burned my first disc. I thought it was magic. What is this this third world? you know, architecture is giving me this CD. I didn't understand PCs at all years ago. And for some people who play exclusively on consoles and don't play, you know, games on PCs, they will have that moment like we had when we went from PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3 or from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. I know people... You're still going to get that moment, though. It's just... It's not going to be... It, it, it can't be the same you because get, you're going to see... The, here's the difference, right? Is before, you couldn't play that new game that came out on PlayStation 3 on your PlayStation 2 because... You know, just didn't get developed for it because the hardware was completely different. There's no way they could have done it. Now, you can buy into an Xbox One. You can buy into a PS4, and you know that the games are going to keep getting developed for it, even though the PS4 Neo comes out or the PS4 Neo 2 comes out. You're still going to be able to play games on your PS4. So you, you're, they're not asking you buy, you know, spend more money. This is actually a good value because you know that games are going to keep coming out for it. 
It's yeah. just a, I think it's a smart thing, man. I, I think overall it's a smart thing, too. I'm just talking about from the aspect of that magical moment when you see something new. The world now, just doesn't feel, work that way anymore. I feel though. like... Yeah, you know, but I'm I'm an old guy. You know, you can't you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Sometimes I I enjoyed that that feeling of going from PS3 to PS4, seeing something, seeing a video of actual gameplay that wasn't possible. You know, on the the hardware that you were on. Now hardware is always going to be ahead, but it's going to be playing the games that you can play on last generation consoles. You know, we're going to have consoles like the Neo and the Scorpio that are technically far superior than what we have right now. But mm-hmm. it's going to be playing the same games that we have right now. So when they do release the Xbox 4 or whatever they release or the PlayStation 5, that technology will probably already be there. All they're going to do is just take away the aspect of we're, we're only playing, uh, you know, backwards compatible games. Now we're not doing that anymore. Now we're just making games exclusively for this hardware. But the hardware has yeah. already been there. So I feel like it's not really next gen. I feel like it's like a half step. But I like the not, I, step. It doesn't make sense anymore. Like that gen generational leap doesn't make sense anymore. Look at the leap from PS3 to PS4. Like, was there really a leap there? There was, but yeah, yeah I feel like this is Xbox, an evolution. It's, 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 it's Xbox becoming One. less. It's 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 just about power. It's just about like we're, we're playing the same games in the same world. Skyrim came out for the PS3 and PS and the Xbox 360. And they're coming out for the PS4. It's going to be the same game. It's just that you know the de- the textures can be better quality. The rendering can be look better. better. Like it's the same fucking yeah. game. We're at the point where the gains that you get from you know increasing processing power is is really just about you know how ca- how good can the hair look? How high high fidelity can the textures be? You know how yes, fast can we stream these things rate, to yeah. keep the pop up from coming in? Yeah, the frame rate and stuff. It's just. We're not living in the same world where, it, where the jump between the SNES and the N64 was like, you know, like we can now play games in 3D. We're yeah, at a well, place and, where and now we can right. play games in VR, which is, you know, some would say as importance, others would say is a gimmick. You know, as time has gone on, you're right. It has been less and less of a generational gap. Yeah. Going from Nintendo to Super Nintendo, minds blown, yeah. caps flew off. Right. You know, going from Sega Genesis to Sega Saturn, everybody was like going crazy. No. Uh, going from like 64 <laughs> to the, going from like the Nintendo 64 to the PlayStation 1 and then PS1 and PS2, it gradually got the gap kind of closed. And I yeah. think with the PS, PS2 and PS3, mm-hmm. it was closing. With PS3 to the PS4, it even closed more. Uh, and I guess it is right, but it doesn't take away the fact that I don't like it. All right. I mean, I think it makes it, it it makes for a better community for gamers. People will be able to buy into the PlayStation universe or the Xbox universe for less money by just buying the older hardware. It'd still be playing video games with the rest of us. Just because you can't afford the new greatest and best doesn't mean you're excluded from the platform. Just because you don't have four hundred dollars yeah. to buy the best new hardware out there, you can go to Best Buy or you can buy a PS4 once the PS4 Neo is out and buy it for two hundred bucks. And still be involved, still be playing video games. I think it's more inclusive, and I think it's smart on... It's it's a good thing for everybody. Uh, let me ask you a question, Pryor. Do you think that moves like this, or at least going forward with this strategy when it comes to uh, upgrades and mid, mid-lifespan upgrades to consoles, do you think this will just negate the whole aspect of next generation? Because the next generation is I always going to be happening. kind of there. Uh, I can it's see always that happening. Be like, it, you could call this the next generation, right? You look at the power difference between the Xbox One and the Scorpio. Same. That's the next generation, right? Oh, yeah. But the the difference is is they're not changing the entire platform. They're not changing the you know the the system software. They're not changing the way they have to develop games. You're you can develop a game for the Xbox One and for the Scorpio. It's just on the Scorpio you get to run it with better textures, higher frame rates, you know, 4K. Whereas, you know, the Xbox One, the hardware just wasn't capable of that. But if you're cost conscious, if you're cost conscious, if you're not interested in 4K TVs, then there's no reason to get the the Scorpio. You can save money, buy the Xbox One, play it on your, you know, your current TV, and you're all good, you know? Mm. But if you if you are interested in you know playing games at 4K, if you are interested in you know the highest texture resolution, or maybe you're a competitive shooter fanatic, so you want 60 frames per second, then yeah, you know go ahead. You're gonna have to pay for it just like you would on a PC. It gives more options to more consumers, and I, I like it. And I don't see a need to have these these hard lines cut off where oh you have an Xbox That's- 360 game you can't play that anymore. You have a PS3 game you can't play that anymore. 
you know, on a, in the in this new future, you buy a game on Xbox One. When you buy a Scorpio, you can still play that game. But oh shit, now it's got better graphics. Awesome. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so all react. Oh shit. Just so like that. In closing, I guess we are probably moving towards a future where we do see that hard line disappear. And I, I totally uh, understand and agree with it. I, I do like the backwards compatibility. I think that as these companies progress, they need to make sure that that happens regardless. You know, now it's kind of becoming a staple with these mid-generation uh, upgrades. Yeah. But I, I like the whole idea of the PlayStation 2 being able to play PlayStation 1 games. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and the PS3 being able to play some, you know, older generation games yeah. while still being a next generation of it. I just feel like now with these jumps, these mid jumps, when they do announce the PlayStation 4, I mean, PlayStation 5 or the next Xbox, which is truly like the successor to this Scorpio or Xbox One idea. What could it be? I mean, it could, it had to be something completely different for it to be considered the next gen because the next gen is currently going to be here within the next year. We're at a point with diminishing returns on power too, you know, like, yeah, we can get 4k graphics, but the world is the same world you're seeing in 1080p. It just, you know, mm -hmm. looks slightly nicer at 4k, you know, even with VR, I mean, you're, you've been exploring 3d worlds on your TV for 10 years, right? 15 years. So mm -hmm. the, the difference is just the interface with VR, the immersiveness, but it's not, you know, they're not doing anything different that they've yeah. been doing. It's just the way they display it. So, you know, more and more power at, is not going to give us the revolution that the SNES gave us over the NES or the... Now you're playing with power. or Yeah, or the, you know... You were getting your diaper changed the back Game then. GameCube or the N64. <laughs> when, when I first played the N64 and I played Mario for the first time, it was... A mind-blowing experience playing yeah, it was playing Turok, playing Goldeneye. You know, th this was a console playing. You know, playing in a 3D space. That was a huge leap, I, and yeah. I don't think I don't even think you know VR is as big a leap to be honest with you, because Me every neither. game was 2D before that. Every game, yeah. And then all of a sudden, everything became 3D, and it's like the world just opened up. Yeah, but it's not. Just, it's, it, we don't even have anything like that on the horizon, you know? You know what we need to do? We need to, to uh, protest uh, Harvard University and Stanford, and they need to figure out how we could open up the fourth dimension because we need more of these jumps, okay? We can't just stay in the third the third dimension all the time. 3D is old news. We need the four. We need Tesseracts mm -hmm. in our video games, okay? But yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm actually pretty excited about the way that consoles are looking to move forward because I'm always, I want to be on the cutting edge, and I... I didn't like how the Xbox 360 and the PS3 lasted as long as they did because I was looking yeah. at, you know, graphics from computers thinking, shit, it'd be nice to have something more like that <laughs> in the games I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that's this gets us to parity. Yeah, I completely agree. I love this idea of just being able to upgrade sooner if you want to stay at that, you know, yeah. just have the best graphical capabilities you want. Like, that option's available for you. You don't have to buy it if you don't want, and you'll still be able to play with people. I think that's awesome. I love yeah, well, that. we're we're all gonna buy them all regardless. It's like Pokemon yeah. for us, but it's video games. You know, systems. we're all gonna buy all and, of these. Yeah. And and one thing I wanted to say to you guys, I was really uh, questioning the overall response from both of you when we did the show today about Nintendo's NX rumors. A lot of this stuff has kind of been vetted by reputable sources uh, as kind of the real deal of what Nintendo's yeah. you know doing. And I thought I may be the only one who was really excited, you know, hearing what I heard. Yeah. And I'm happy that I'm not. You know, the little bit of information that we did get, you know, this it seems really exciting to me. It seems like this this handheld slash home console is going to be amazing and really, really change the way we play. And I, I admire Nintendo for that because they don't just bring out a system with a new GPU and, you know, a couple of new IPs. They usually try to change the whole dynamic of the way we play yeah, video I'm, games. I just want, yeah. I, I just hope they're smart enough to realize that, you know, that we want that virtual console, like maybe a subscription plan for that virtual console or, you know, like don't be charging us, overcharging us, like nickel and diamond us for that thing. Also, like, I, I'm real concerned about how these controllers are going to fit onto the yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, like, there's, there there's a lot up in the air. I'm, I'm looking forward to their work? announcement. They, it would have to be a D-pad on both sides, an analog on both sides, and at least three to four buttons on each side. That's just the only way it would work. You couldn't have a, a D-pad on one side or just two analogs and a D-pad. It needs to be parity on both sides of the thing. So the way that they're designing this has to be amazing. 
Because if you hand somebody a, a controller, they say, "Man, I don't like this one. Give me the other one." This is going to be a problem. So, yeah. you know, if one side's different than the other, they have to have they both have to have buttons and a D pad and an analog. So, well, guys, I just I want I to see say, this. That thing. was an epic debate. I mean, I haven't gotten to talk in like thirty minutes. So, you guys just went off. It was crazy. No, we just got tired of hearing your young bullshit. Hey, man, when you hang out with a bunch <laughs> oh, of YouTubers, you got to butt the fuck in because. YouTubers like to talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to talk, too, but, man, I don't know. It's hard to jump in sometimes. Well, you. Robbie, hey. Robbie was seated to the back. <laughs> you had enough of my bullshit. It's fine. I can just be quiet for a while. Uh, do we have any other news? Are we done? That is the news. That's and the news. it that is. Was, that was good, man. That A lot of cool news came out this week. Absolutely, man. Dark Darksiders Remastered. Amazing. Just kidding. <laughs> That was a really low blow. <laughs> wow. All right. Nintendo took over the news this week. And, of course, you guys know that uh, this week we'll be playing Banner Saga 2 on the Xbox One. Xbox Live games with gold. I never got the gold yet. Uh, but I do get the games for free. And so if you guys have Xbox Ones and you haven't downloaded it yet, go to the Xbox Live store, get games with gold, and uh, download the Banner Saga 2. So you can play it this week, and you can chime in in the comment section on Twitch and on YouTube and let us know what you thought about the game too. Because yeah. we are going to discuss it. And since I, last week I was so busy, guys, wish me luck. I'm going to be getting a promotion this week, Ooh. and, and some, some good things are going to be happening for me. So I shaved the beard off so I can look younger. You know, if you look older, like, oh, this, this guy doesn't even know how to work a fucking computer. I shaved Pretty it off. Grandpa, what's he okay. doing now? <laughs> and so I'm going to hopefully see some uh, some new dev dividends this week, a raise, and hopefully a promotion or something. So That's awesome. I've been, I've been busting my ass last week. That's why I wasn't able to do anything. Yeah, what is that? a piece of paper with squares on it they said find the key and i don't see any There's key no on this key thing. on it what? <laughs> i'm really confused <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh thank you guys Offensive so much for know how to work oh, that's all stuff. that's all you need you know what i'm saying hopefully yeah. it doesn't get lost Old in your school. beard again watch the office brian it's called ageism okay the office is the best show on tv of all time <laughs> it's called ageism if you're getting old they try to change shit Get you an attorney and sue the whole company. That's called a retirement. That's a retirement plan. Shit. I don't think that's going to work for me. Yeah, not you. Have you seen this guy's house? He, like, has everything in there. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I also want to just shout out Basker Beat. Thank you for the subscription today. We didn't shout it out during the show. We're not going to do shout outs of stuff during the show. But we noticed you, show. and we but love you. We did you. see you, and I really do appreciate it. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon again. Thank you guys for joining us. Beastly Gamer, what are you up to this week? Well, I want to say thanks to all the guys wishing me good luck this week. I appreciate it so much. This week, I'm going to be playing, of course, Banner Saga 2. Uh, and I'm going to try to get back into um, a Time and Eternity, a game that I'm halfway through on the PlayStation 3. Uh, it's been kind of hard with, you know, to get my mind around these changes that have been taking place in the workplace. i got a lot of videos coming out this week. They're all done, scheduled, ready to go so I can relax. But I'm going to be playing some games this week. You guys can believe that. Wow. Robbie, what are you up to this week? Uh, yeah, definitely be playing some more games. Uh, Banner Saga, we'll definitely have to get into some other stuff. And... Uh... That should be about it. But before we end, I just want to do one quick little plug because uh, we just launched the Beastly Thoughts live Discord server. I'm sure you guys know about this, and uh, I'm just going to post it in the chat so people can join if they like. Oh, hold on. I'm messing it up already. All right. There you go. I'm posting in the chat now for anybody who'd like to join. We have a small community going on there, and I would love to see you guys there. We're having a good time, so... I Thank love you your keyboard. So I love your keyboard, Robbie. It sounds like you're typing with Thor's hammer. It sounds like you're typing in my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the link. Robbie a fucking mic hanger, man. <laughs> Get that mic off of his desk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or something. It's on my desk. Oh, it's like All right. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. We will see you next week. Bye, Peace. Everybody. Tell everybody it's supposed to be between us. Oh, no, fuck you. I love everyone. <laughs>